This section of video details construction procedures used by the Minnesota Department of Transportation, referred to as Type A repairs. These repairs involve sealing joints and cracks during rehabilitation of concrete pavements. Additional details for the procedures discussed in this lesson can be found in the plans or are available from MnDOT's Office of Materials. Selection of the appropriate type of repair is detailed in the plans or is made by the engineer. This video section includes standards, guidelines, and recommendations on proper construction procedures and materials used to seal the cracks and joints on a concrete rehabilitation project. Before detailing type A repairs, it is important to understand the need to maintain a proper shape factor for the sealing materials. The shape factor is the ratio of the width of the seal to the depth of the seal. For example, the recommended shape factor for tooled silicone sealant is 2 to 1. For a 5 8 inch wide joint, a silicone seal 5 16 of an inch deep is required. The sealant charts in the MnDOT concrete pavement repair specifications, together with the material manufacturer's recommendations, should always be followed. If the shape factor is wrong, the joint seal will fail. If the sealant is too thick, the material will be less elastic and will either tear away from the pavement or even pull the pavement apart at the seal. If the sealant is too thin, the seal will be weak and is likely to fail by tearing apart. In either case, the seal will be broken and incompressible material and water will be allowed to enter the pavement structure. It is ineffective to seal cracks or joints greater than one and one quarter inches wide. For these situations, the appropriate Type B repair should be considered. MnDOT has various designations for joint and crack sealing. All designations follow five basic steps. Step one is to remove any in-place sealant material present in the joint or crack. The second step for most repairs is to form a reservoir for the sealing material by sawing the existing crack or joint. This is often referred to as widening. The next step is to clean and dry the repair by sandblasting and air blasting. The fourth step is to provide the properly shaped reservoir by installing the proper backer rod as required. The final step is to install the required sealing material to provide a seal for the joint or crack. Now let's go into the details of each of these steps. The first step in sealing is to remove any material present in the existing joint or crack. Most sealing requires the second step of sawing the existing joint or crack to provide a reservoir for the new sealant. For joints, the existing joint is sawed with a diamond saw to a dimension 1 8 inch wider than the original joint. For random cracks, the crack is widened by sawing a sealant reservoir following the original pavement crack. The depth of these cuts varies with the width of the repair and the type of sealant used as detailed in the MnDOT concrete repair specifications. Immediately after sawing, the joint or crack must be thoroughly cleaned by water flushing to remove all slurry and foreign materials. Before sealing, all joints and cracks must be dry and clean. This is accomplished by air blasting and sand blasting the walls of the reservoir. Sandblasting must be done to ensure that both faces of the joint or crack are cleaned. This is accomplished by blasting the reservoir on both sides. After sandblasting, loose material is removed from the joint or crack by high pressure air blasting. This operation must be done immediately before sealing since material blown into the reservoir by wind or traffic must be removed by additional air blasting. The reservoir walls should be inspected to ensure they are free of residue. The fourth step in the sealing process is the installation of backer rod to provide the proper shape factor for the sealing material and reduce the amount of material needed to seal the crack or joint. Specifications require different diameter of backer rod depending on the width of the reservoir and the sealant material. In general, the rod should be 1 8 inch larger than the crack or joint so it pushes against the walls of the reservoir. It is important that the backer rod be installed at the proper depth so the sealant material will perform properly. 
The final step in sealing is the placement of the sealant. There are two types of sealant used, hot poured elastic type and silicone type. MnDOT concrete pavement repair specifications require both of these sealants be applied as recommended by the material manufacturer. Hot poured sealants are placed in the reservoir so the top of the sealant is between 1 8 inch below to even with the pavement surface. Silicone sealants are used also to seal transverse joints. Silicone is first placed in the reservoir and is then tooled to the proper shape using backer rod or another approved device. If the sealant is higher than the pavement surface, traffic and snowplow activity may damage or pull the sealant out of the repair. Joint sealant material should be fully cured before construction operations are continued. This lesson has outlined the five steps to sealing cracks and joints on a concrete pavement rehabilitation project. It must be remembered that project requirements and specifications may differ from the contents of this video, so care should be taken to consult the requirements before beginning work.